Ask the Podcast Coach for July 1st, 2023. Let's get ready to podcast. There it is. It's that music that means it's Saturday. It's time for Ask the Podcast Coach, where you get your podcast questions answered live. I'm Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting.com. And joining me right there, there he is. He's back. The one and only Jim Cullison from TheAverageGuy.tv. Jim, how's it going, buddy? Greetings, Dave. Happy Saturday morning to you. Always good to be here on a Saturday morning. I was had to do a trip to Kansas City last weekend. I would have rather have been here, but big thanks to Dan Lefebvre for filling in for me. He did a bang-up job. appreciate it. Every time you say you go to Kansas City, the song Kansas City from the Beatles, which I think is really probably a Chuck Berry tune or something like that, has uh, pops in my head. Good barbecue but, down there. Good barbecue. Yeah, but yeah. even before we get to the coffee pour, speaking okay. of great tunes, we have a great tune, except the roadcasters being, we, we do have a great tune, and that's this one, because that's right. Everybody, hallelujah, we have a new patron and that of course is randy black uh from the show work from the weight and i know randy because he joined my monthly fitness challenge which makes sense because he's all about losing weight and was just killing it all month in there so if you're a person trying to uh lose weight uh check out randy's show work from the and uh we'll be talking about that a little later as well but uh He's an awesome supporter now. You can be an awesome supporter. Simply go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome, and you can be cool like Randy and have us giving you a shout-out for becoming an awesome supporter. So thanks so much for that, uh, Randy. He is a really nice guy, too, man. He's just been – because you can see – well, it's it's basically a Slack group is what this monthly challenge turns out to be. And uh, we're all – we use a, a an app called – fitness fit for friends or something like that but you basically put in your weight and it's like a biggest loser competition except nobody can see your weight mm. and uh mm. he was just crushing it all week but nice. uh, you know when you're losing weight it, it does make you thirsty sure and does. um you know there's one way to uh to make yourself unthirsty is uh of course a hot cup of joe I'm just picturing that now, like coming in, you're all sweaty from running around outside and like, give me some coffee. And like, no, I, I don't think yeah, that would be it. But uh, yeah, that coffee pour is brought to you by our good friend, Mark, over at podcastbranding.co. And uh, I've liked Mark's work so much. I've hired him three times, once for the School of Podcasting, once for the Podcast Rodeo Show, and once for Ask the Podcast Coach. And uh, he's done a great job every single time. Uh, here's some more examples of his work if you're watching the video. And the great thing about Mark is he sits down with you one-on-one and he's going to listen to your podcast and make sure that the artwork fits the whole kind of feel of the show. And if you need more than artwork, he can do more than that. He'll do your whole website. He'll do kind of a, a marketing, oh, what would be the word? Diagnosis? Audit. To, audit there audit. we go and uh because if you're like i don't know anything about branding well mark does he's been doing this for quite a while he's an award-winning graphic artist and he's a podcaster that's really one of the biggest pluses of mark is the fact that the guy's been podcasting for a while so check him out podcastbranding.co Coffee is oh so good this morning. Good to be back. And a big thanks. Again, Dan was on the show last week. Dan, thanks for filling in for me. Based on a true story podcast at based on a true story podcast.com. I think you got to know him a little bit better last week. Soup. So, are we okay? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure you, you look like you wanted to interrupt me. I was going to interrupt and I was like, I'll wait till he's done. Oh, okay. Uh, Dan did a great job. And of course, if you haven't had a chance to listen, head out there right now and uh, and give it a listen. And and he also has a super cool mug. So Dan, thanks for your sponsorship. Appreciate it. Yeah, I had no idea he was like a full timer. Yeah. Like this is like his gig now. And he's, you know, apparently crushing it. And yeah, the thing I wanted, I, I need to go back to that episode and I'm going to pull it into the school of podcasting because there were three questions and In the answer, Dan says the phrase, well, typically I just focus on the content. He said that three times. Every time he said it, it was like, 
we're talking about marketing and blah 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 and it's like well i usually just the the content and then something else and blah blah, blah. what it is in the content and i'm dying can you hear that noise by the way no no I can't. okay good it must be on this com- oh it is it's on this computer i'm like i keep getting you get notified. Some, you're on your windows pc today and you probably don't have your notification shut off yes that yeah. is it and i was like wait what well, that is going into the recording though so that's always fun but i just uh i was really impressed and the more i went over and listened to his show how unique it is you know, it's not, I told him, I said, I went over thinking I was going to listen to a movie podcast, which it kind of is. But on the other hand, it's, uh, you know, it's, it was kind of a history lesson at the same time. So yeah, yeah Dan's a, a good guy. He does a lot of, a lot of research and a lot of work yeah. on his podcast. And, yeah. I mean, it's full time. So he's, he, he, he can afford to do that, but it's also, he's full time. So if you don't do the research, <laughs> if you don't do the work you know, that, that, the, 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 all the sponsorship stuff that goes along with it doesn't doesn't follow. So he's got to put some of that, that time in to get it done. He, I think that's the key and it's the research, right? I, I I really think sometimes we fly and I make this mistake a lot that I think just experience on its own is enough with the content that I have. And I guess if that experience is a full-time experience, maybe so, but Oftentimes, if that experience is a 10 minute look at a piece of equipment, it, that, that's not as well researched as if I'd spent, you know, a half a day or a full day with the piece of equipment. I think it's a mistake we make. We get a little, we get into this for a while and then uh, and maybe I'm just talking about me. We get lazy. No, and, you're not. That's <laughs> right. I'm guilty of this as well. <laughs> you know, and you start thinking like, oh, I got to record another podcast this week. I, I'll mail this one. Nobody will notice. Pretty soon you're mailing them all in. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I had a guy on my show. He's coming on. It'll be this Monday's episode. And I meant to listen to a show and I listened to like three fourths of an episode. And I didn't really look at his website, but I knew he was a marketing guy. And I was impressed with his company because they did an overview. They did a review of my sales page and gave me tons of great feedback. And so that's kind of how I knew him. And then towards the end of the show, he kind of, you know, tips his hand a little bit as to exactly like who he is and what they do and who they work with. And I was like, oh, holy cow, I didn't realize I had this guy on my show. And that's not when you want to find out at the end of the interview that, oh, if I would have known this, I would have asked that. So it's always kind of, uh, you know, research. And you think about it, the shows that are really not all of them. But when I look at like Jordan Harbinger, he is the guy that reads every book, you know, and listens to. Uh, other interviews of his guests he goes to their social so he can pick up not uh he said just to see what their hobbies are because sometimes it'd be like yeah we just got back from aspen we enjoyed a bunch of uh you know skiing or whatever and he just does that kind of stuff so it's um it's always tricky and i i think you know the more research you do the better questions if you're doing interviews and things like that and uh but the fun part is there's only 24 hours in a day uh, coach Dave says the majority of my production time is spent on research. Yep. And citing sources. Yeah. I learned that from Jen Briney and I'm going to be using Jen Briney today because I'm going to, she had a guy not to get into politics, but she had a guy from CNN who was uh, head of something in the U S government. And he admitted on CNN that the U S uses propaganda against their own people. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I need to go back and get that clip. Cause nobody believes me. When I say that. And what Jen does is she actually has, she figured out that a lot of her stuff is their PDFs, especially if it's a bill that went through or something like that. And she's figured out how you can actually have a link go right to page 17, paragraph mm-hmm. six. So, and she's always saying, look, if you find something that I'll be more than happy to retract anything, but she pretty much backs up everything she says. Cause I mean, the, the problem is right now, at least, uh, you kind of got to show your sources because nobody believes anything anymore. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, you're just yeah. you're fake news, and if you're not mm-hmm. fake news, then you're just uh, you know, whatever. And you know, then people <sighs> at each other, and it's it's spooky. So, uh, anyway, I do have a, a strange. It's not a strange question. Uh, we have we have a, a old standard one. We'll get to here in a minute. But here's one. I, I thought, oh, we should bring that with. Uh, uh, you know, 
I, I totally lost. Here's here's. Can we just? I'm going to peel back the curtain. Yeah. I was halfway through my thought. This is why you don't look at the chat room while you're talking. Because I looked over and I saw where Dr. said, "Can you play that clip without copyright issues?" She is. Um, her thing I definitely could see as fair use. Now realize that fair use is the defense you use when you go to court. And the last time I've been to court uh, was only for divorce, and that was expensive, and <laughs> the lawyers are expensive. And, uh, yeah, and then uh, Craig says that the uh, the BBC have started using the word verified for the new – well, that's good. In theory, uh, in they're science – They're all supposed to be verified. <laughs> that's the whole point. But I remember in science, there was always the – what was it where somebody else did your same thing? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was – um. A peer reviewed, peer reviewed uh, study. So, in other words, I had somebody else do the same thing I did and they got the same results. So, yeah, it's going to be tricky. But meanwhile, back at the weird question that I don't know how to answer How do you guys handle fans that are a little too fanatic about your show? He says, for example, we have a Discord channel for our podcast. One member floods every single channel with questions and thoughts. And comments. It's like they're live tweeting, listening to an episode, and they write every single thought that comes into their head while listening, even if the episode aired years ago. If another fan writes something, they overtake the whole conversation. I don't want anyone to feel discouraged from listening or participating, but I'm not sure how to handle someone so passionate that they're generally, well, annoying. And I was like, that's a that's a that's a question I don't see a lot because usually it's like, how do I get people to comment on things and that? And I don't, I've seen I've seen other companies. Uh, I've been in groups where uh, especially many times these types of comments don't bring a lot of value. They're they're kind of like likewise also I'm trying to find a different way to say me, too. But somebody will say, I did a thing, and the thing then happened, and they'll go like, oh, yeah, me too. And you're like, okay, or whatever. And every time somebody says anything, they're like, great point. Or it's just not, you know. And and I've seen, in one case, because that one person was annoying, every single person in the group was like, is there any way to, like, tell so-and-so to, like, ease off of it and they just ended up shutting down the whole thing rather than than upset one person and and dash the you know love of of a single you know audience member they just shut the whole thing down and i was like mm, boy that's now on the i was in that group that was person was really annoying and i actually left the group before they shut it down but jim have you ever had anything yeah. or seen anything like this oh yeah yeah all the time I think it's one of those situations where you need to, first of all, be patient with it. Let it yeah. run its course. Because I always think if this person can figure it out and then, you know, and, and if people come to me and say, hey, so-and-so is always there or always, always responding or whatever, not appropriate, I, I tell them the same thing. Be patient. Let's just see where this, let's see where this goes. Sometimes the universe fixes itself. At right. That point. But you got to be patient, right? And you get you're going to have to feel if you're a moderator, and this is you know in these cases usually I'm the moderator because if I'm not, I just leave the group if it gets annoying. But um, so so wait one, wait and see if the universe and it's really really hard because you don't have you don't have as much patience as you think you do, right? What, what feels like you know months is actually just days, and you're like, oh yeah, this has been for well actually just since last Thursday. So give it some time as we go through. Then I think you have to have a private conversation with the individual. Got to pull them aside privately. This is not, I think it's where a lot of folks make mistakes is they try to handle this thing in public, right? Yeah. They try to handle it in the threads. Hey, you got to handle this privately on the side. Hey, pull them aside, have a conversation, call them if you can, if that's, if that's applicable, whatever, but have this conversation that says, mm, like, Listen, I appreciate your your uh, enthusiasm. I appreciate appreciate your dedication to what we're doing here, but I am getting some negative feedback. 
Now you run the risk. They're going to say, who <laughs> I want to talk to him. Right. You're like, we're not going to do that. Like, we're just not going to do that here. Um, you, you, you run the risk of driving them off. Usually when that happens, they leave very, very, uh, loudly if that, and you got to kind of be willing to, this is this area and leadership, I think. And as an admin in a group like this, you're a leader. I think this is one of those areas in leadership that is the hardest part about leading people is you're going to, you're going to have situations like this and you just got to kind of swallow it and say, well, that, you know, I, I made a decision for, for the best, for the betterment of the group and not just in the, the individual, the needs of the many are worth more than the needs of the few. If we're going to pull in a Star Trek reference. So yeah, it's, it's, and it's almost a no win situation. Nobody, you don't yeah. walk away from this going, Oh, who sometimes maybe, but most times, you know, you don't, you don't walk away going, man, that really worked out well. It's always a disaster that you're, you know, you're like, well, I had to do it. Yeah. You made a great point though. Cause it's, what's the bumper sticker. It's always praise in public and something yeah, you know, criticized in private or correct, correct, in, correct private. in private. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. so that's where if you can find a scapegoat, you could say, I don't know if you realize this, but there are people that have their app set up so that every time you leave a comment in Discord, like it pings them. And, you know, uh, I love all your comments. Uh, is there any way, instead of putting them out, like I see here where you put out nine comments in about a minute and a half, is there any way you could just wait and put out one comment, you know, kind of consolidate them all? It would make it a little less... Uh, you know, these people are getting pinged all the time. I love your comments, but is there any way you can kind of consolidate them? That way you're making the app the, the bad guy. You know, hey, it's it's pinging people. We can't help it. Uh, as opposed to, hey, you know, I'm so glad that you love the show, but good God, are you annoying? Um, is there any way you could stop being? Yeah, I don't know that that would work, but um, yeah, that's that's a tricky one. Yeah, I've, um, I've had two. I've had uh, to deal with uh, from memory. I'm sure there's more, but mm -hmm. two. Neither one of them ended well. And fortunately, mm -hmm. they they ended, they ended. So they left the community and yeah. never to be heard from again. But um, you know, it's still it's still painful and it still hurts. And most of us don't like to most of us don't like to have to confront people that way. That's just not a natural. You know, people like, oh, yay, today I get to confront people. <laughs> this is yeah. going to be awesome. That I love this job. Now, most of us get into podcasting thinking we're going to say things and people are going to praise us. Oh, you're so smart. Thank you. That That's what we're looking for, like that dopamine hit from, from people saying, oh, you're so smart. Thank you, blah, 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 blah. But we forget as humans, we're all broken. And so you're going you're gonna to attract people that are going to are needy. And they're going to want more than you can give or more than you're willing to give. And you've got to be willing to set some boundaries, I think, in this to say, this is what I can do for you. The, by the way, the earlier, and, and this may not back up what you said, Dave, but mm. the earlier you confront these problems with people, oh, the better. Yeah. I, and, and this contradicts what I just said of letting the universe, you know, to maybe see if to, it, it takes care of itself. But you can't let it go too long because the longer it goes, the more painful it is uh, for some people. So I don't know. I just contradicted myself, but maybe that's. Maybe well, that that kind of goes back to the whole why when I saw this question, I'm like, I am not sure, you know, what I would do here. Um, Jay says, I like the idea of pointing out that comments could be consolidated. Yeah. And the, going back to what you're saying, we all want to be liked. And so when you have to kind of not reprimand, but you know, you have somebody who's just, they just, they're on fire about your show and you're like, Hey, I really love the fact that you're on 12 on a scale from one to 10, you know, and you're trying to say, can you back that down to nine without saying, can you back that down to nine? You know, it's yeah. kind of, uh, yeah. so it's, um, it's kind of tricky, but, uh, it's, well, you know, it's maybe where community standards are important to you um, know, where, where you've got some kind of manifest or some kind of um, charter in your social groups that says, hey, here's kind of the expected behavior. And if you can kind of say say that, like you said, say that in a way, you know, like, hey, this is really a, a little bit more than I was looking for in, in this kind of group. Can I can I ask you just to back it down a little bit? 
that's super easy to say here. It's super hard to say when you're looking at the individual, yeah. talking to them. But it, again, <laughs> that's it, why you do it over text. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, don't. I I don't think you do that stuff. No, no, no you need tone of voice here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, I think that's the biggest mistake a lot of folks make is they they take the easy way out and they they try to do yeah. it via. And of course, you know, words text always is imply has a negative. You know, implication to it and so people yeah. read it in a different way right it's 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 pretty difficult it's a it's it, it's where you really find out if you're a leader or not if i think in some and it's okay we don't all have to be leaders right in what we do but you kind of find out pretty quickly like yeah i'm pretty good at leading people or because you can't lead people unless you can have these kinds of conversations yeah. right and just like you said you have to have doesn't make it any easier but you have to have that vision of this person is going to drive people out of this community. Yeah. And yeah. if I have to accidentally hurt someone's feelings, we all hate doing that. But eight months from now, we'll be in a much better place. And so I've got to go through this pain point to get to the better place. It's just, it sounds yeah. easy on yeah. paper. It's just not. No, it's super hard. But maybe that's where you use the good news, bad news, good news. Yeah right? Hey, thank you. I, I love your passion here. This is, I, I appreciate you being a part of this, some great stuff. There's a few areas here though, that have become a little bit of a concern to me and this, this, and that I'd really like you to continue to do what you do because these things are important to me. So kind of that good news, bad news, good news conversation. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I forget who I got that off of Reddit. I forget who who the actual person was, but good luck with that because holy cow, that's uh, that's a tricky you're, one. And you're gonna get, you're always gonna get one. It's gonna yeah. happen. You yeah. you will have a super enthusiastic, maybe overly enthusiastic uh, person in your community, and if you can turn that into, uh, I mean, oftentimes they can be very very helpful. If you can focus, you might need to give them more attention. But if you can focus that energy in positive, constructive ways for the group, they can do some amazing things. Just got to get them going in the right direction. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, from the chat room, we're at uh, every Saturday, we're at askthepodcastcoach.com slash live, where you can watch live and then ask questions via chat. You can also go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash question if you want to jump into the video. And of course, the video is is optional. But this is from Andreas. He says, I wanted uh, a way to make sure people can get value. And at the same time, help me to keep my active podcast. So I wrote my first book, which is very cool. And he says, and at this point, um, since I'm a one man army tips to get the most out of the opportunity after two years of hard work. Well, um, what he's really saying is how can I use the book to grow the podcast? I mean, other than creating my own promotional content, well, that would be my first thing. Start a podcast about the book. Um, I know for my book, Profit from Your Podcast, which he grabbed from the Wait, back you shelf. Wrote a book? Really? I wrote a book. Yes, I did. Uh, proven strategies to turn your listeners into a livelihood, where I interviewed 70 podcasters that give their best advice and insights. Available at profitfromyourpodcast.com. Uh, you and I needed, I still need to do more of this. Uh, one, uh, record the audiobook. If if it's about podcasting, you should have Dave. Hey Dave, you want to put an audiobook out for this? Yeah, that would be a good idea. That's coming hopefully by the end of this year, uh, which I'm kind of glad that I accidentally didn't do an audiobook because now I can do an audiobook with bonus content. Mm. But um, I would whatever your book is about, see if there are podcasts on that subject. And this is where you got to do the work. Don't be a spray and pray, but try to be a guest on that show and volunteer a copy of the book. You know, if you, you know, I see uh dear Mr. Or Mrs. Podcaster, I see where you do a show on this and on episode 27, you talked about this. Have you ever thought about covering this topic? I just wrote a book called such and such and such and such. Uh, if you're, are you currently looking for guests? That's one of the things I do now. Are you currently looking for guests? Cause they might not. That would be the other thing. See if there are other guests on the show. I still have people that uh, uh, I had someone request to be on a show that's been dead for like seven years and never had any guests. And I was like, Ugh. so uh, try to be a guest on the show. And then that's where if you don't have a podcast about your book, 
And uh, well, then you just point them at the book. But if you have a website for your book, uh, you can get them on a newsletter. You know, that's where a lead magnet. So you want something to where anybody that comes over is either going to follow your newsletter, follow your podcast if you have one, or buy the book. Uh, the newsletter, the nice thing about the newsletter is the newsletter then gives you access to get them to listen to your podcast if you have one or it gets them to buy the book. But it's a lot of people think, I know when I got done with a book, I was like, whew, book is done. I got a publisher. Yay, yay. And I knew the publisher was going to really promote it a bunch. But that really is. It's like a podcast. Just writing the book is not going to make it sell because you and whatever, probably 20,000 other books were released on that day on Amazon. I'm not sure how many are, but a ton. So I don't know, Jim, any thoughts on, uh, I, I, uh go ahead. Well, I know the, the, I think in my book, it's been a while since I wrote it, but I believe the book mentions the podcast and the podcast mentions the book. So there's, there's a little bit of that going on. Yeah. I think you got to get, I love your newsletter idea <laughs> of writing a book in a way that has a long tail uh, of continued content through a newsletter so that you can, and, and I like the idea of, of, yeah, uh, you know, one promotes the other back and forth. And then if your podcast lends itself to referring to the book or using chapters from the book or coming, coming back around to things from the book, I think that's, that's pretty helpful for your listeners. Like you want to give them a reason and you, know, you got this podcast. And if you write a book that's completely different or, not close to the podcast anyway, you have a hard time saying, well, you know, you know, like we should with your book, we, we could do a series where we highlight a chapter a week. We bring one chapter and how many chapters are in that book? That's a good question. Uh, quite a few. The first chapter talks about how, um, you, your, your podcast needs to be good. Like there's that, um, <laughs> which we talk about every week, but yeah. Uh, yeah. chapter two is getting an audience. Chapter three pre presentation what's, is what's clean. the total. How many, uh, how many total do you have? To total 15. Chapters? So there's 15 weeks of content there to say, yeah. I mean, we could have a book segment, you know, bah, 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 from, <laughs> you know, from the annals, annual annals. Uh, it doesn't um, sound right. Uh, uh, from the, from the pages, there we go. Yes, there you go. from the pages of, you know, and you could make a, and then it, we could, you could make a question around it. Hey, I covered in the, in the book, I covered this, or we want to talk about it some more. So there's 15 weeks of content. I mean, for us, we could be doing that from your book. Now we don't have to even, it's not like we're going to read it to people. We're just going it, to, it's right. going to pose a question that we're going to talk about. So I think there's some ways if you've, if you can write that book with the intention of weaving it into both a newsletter and a book club, I mean, definitely make it book club friendly. Yeah. From, right. And then find some ways to continue to add to it through your podcast or through your newsletter where subscribing, you know, you get the book, subscribe to the newsletter to get, can get the continual updates on it. So that turns that m more into like a workbook than a book book, but I think that's a, I think that's a great way to continue to use it. I'm never going to do it. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to write books. But, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's interesting. One of the, my favorite things I got to do with this week was I, I walked a member of the school of podcasting through submitting their show to Apple and Spotify. And so we did Spotify first and then we did Apple and then we went through Libsyn and did the whole ad, save, approve, ad, save, approve, ad, save, approve. Uh, and we talked for, I don't know, probably five minutes when we we're done. I said, Hey, just for giggles, um, click on that link to Spotify. And they had already added it. Spotify is really quick. And just to watch his face, like, wow. I'm like, I go way to go podcaster. And he just got this huge grin on his face. And I'm like, I said, by the time you wake up tomorrow morning, it'll be an apple. And it was just so much fun to just watch him. Like, wow. I, th I thought about this. So the, the cool thing about writing a book is when you go to Amazon, you're like, Oh wow, that's 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 my name. That's that's like that's my thing. So um it's kind of fun that way. That was that was the joy of of that. But uh yeah, writing a book is it's the book is not the you think it's the hard part until you realize, oh, I gotta get people to read it. And I wish I knew this number. If somebody wants to ask Uncle Google what the average number of books sold for an indie 
artist. I want to say it's something like 25. Um, and I just remember when I got, I just got a recent uh, royalty check. Um, I get one like twice a year, the joys of working with a publisher. Um, <laughs> and uh, they said how much it was. And it was like three digits. And I was like, all right, that's cool. I'm like, I'm actually selling books. So, um, but then you also see, there's all sorts of like, if they, if they ship a bunch of books to a store and they don't sell, then they have to like get the money back. It, there's a whole, it's your, your, uh, your report of how, like, you're just looking for the bottom, like, okay, so how much do I, how much do I get? You know, that's kind of always fun. So, but uh, if you've got episodes, you know, there are a lot of, in fact, there's a, a new thing. It's probably pod book or pod, whatever pod book AI, or I'm just making up websites, but I know I heard of a tool that will take your episodes now transcribes them and via AI will turn them into a book, which means you're still going to have to spend quite a few, you know, amount of minutes to beat that thing into an actual book. So, um, coach Dave says, would you like, uh, would they let you sell copies on your own website and keep the full profit? Yes, they do. In fact, you can buy an autographed copy of this one with a personalized message for 25 bucks. And I thought that was the dumbest idea ever. And I went into, I think I used Gumroad for that. Um, and I was amazed at how many people signed up for an autographed copy of that. The other nice thing about these, I forget what my cost is, but I'll take them with me to events. And on occasion, I've used them as a just... I want to stand out kind of thing and I'll be talking to somebody and they're thinking about starting a podcast. And if they mention monetization, I'll be like, Oh, you know what? Hold on. I got one in my, my laptop bag. I'm like, here, just have a book and I'll just give it to them. And that is the whole law of reciprocity. Like I feel like I owe you now because you've done something nice for me. So they will then sign up for the school of podcasting where I will make more, make my money back and and then some P pretty expensive business card i was i was looking it is an expensive yeah but well relatively i mean it's like i say i don't do this a lot so the, the, the front of my 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 book is blank i'm gonna have to come visit you <laughs> so that I, I think i bought this on amazon so so are i'll you, have to I bring the book uh to to you so you can sign it for me yeah forget are you coming to podcast movement in denver i haven't I haven't decided yet is that okay. fall when is it it's August, I think. Okay. So it doesn't look like it at this point, but, yeah. but no, but wait, but are you driving or are you flying? I'm flying. Oh. So you'll fly right over me. I'll throw the book up I'll, in the air. I'll wave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you catch it, sign it, throw it down. I'm sure that'll work. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, well here we, we have a shout out. Uh, Ronnie Neely says, I like it. Taking the shout out profit from your podcast. I bought the ebook just to throw Dave a couple of bucks. Thank you. Appreciate that. Assuming I knew everything in it from this pod, but so much more info. Yes, it's great. It is. There are things in there that I didn't know though. My think, Oh, there's a guy that is, he, he was, uh, he's out to save the world, uh, the whole global warming, you know, that kind of thing. And he ended up, he was going to start a nonprofit. And then he found out that starting a nonprofit is not a lot of fun. And so he uh, found another nonprofit and I'm trying to find, it's like, it's not angel investing, but um, he ended up, I can't find it, but he ended up coming up under this other nonprofit. And so you can donate to that nonprofit they take 8% via Patreon and it ends up on a, a debit card. And then what he did was he was meeting with all these people that were writing really long, very dry white papers on all this stuff. That's really important, but I don't know about you. When was the last time you read a white paper? Uh, never. Yeah. So he went to them and said, Hey, instead of spending all this money on marketing the white paper, or even doing it like, why don't you just take your research and we'll turn it into a podcast. And that's another way he's making money with his, you know, skills and such. So, um, yeah. So thanks for that, for the, the shout out, uh, DR says in terms of writing a book, you could even do a compilation of interviews. Uh, Harry Duran has done this. I think it's called podcast campfire. If I remember right, he took his interviews, Gary Leland has done that. 
uh, like asking every guest a series of random questions. What's your top three tips to new podcasters? That's a chapter with all your guests answering that one. Yep. All sorts of stuff. But again, just realize, uh, I mean, Ross from live streaming universe an awesome supporter, he does his like yearly now thing on predictions of podcasting. And, you know, then it's a matter of like, just promote, promote, promote. And that's kind of tricky because every year it's like, Oh, I got to come up with a prediction. And, you know, I, I forget, I think my prediction was that media hosts were going to like buy each other. Like we'd either see them go away or, or not. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it hasn't come true. Do you, do you remember what, did you put in yes, a, uh, no, not this year. I didn't, I, but okay. in, in years past, I, to, to your point, I thought too, we'd see more consolidation than we've seen. Although with Stitcher's departure, at least the brand, right? The the brand Stitcher is going to be no longer, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, but and that that is, I think that is a consolidation move. Didn't XM buy them or or? Yeah, I think I was trying to figure out who owns who because there's Triton Digital and then there's Sirius Satellite, and I'm not sure who's. I think they bought them. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure who's on top of that pyramid over there. They were going to try and bring in podcasting to satellite to that to that content yeah. i think they got what they wanted out of it and then said yeah maybe this isn't a this isn't what we thought it was going to be and and decided to shut that you know to shut it down but i'm sure well not always maybe they, maybe they got it and they're like yeah this whole rss thing uh, maybe not you know maybe we we have our own way of doing well things. the thing with stitcher that I wrote an article. James Cridlin has a great one where he found old, like really old videos of them. Cause they had like an app before there was an app store. Mm -hmm. I mean like 2007 ish. And uh, I looked at that and I forgot, I remember I had my own thing. Like I remember when Greg Fitzsimmons was really mad because they used to take your audio and suck it onto their website and they would downgrade it to, it was less than 64 mono. I remember it sounded really bad. And their worry was, and you got to kind of remember, this is 2007. Not everybody had high-speed internet. Not everybody had unlimited data. So I get that. But I remember Podcast One was really upset. But the early days of Stitcher, they were all about the user experience. Yeah. They were one of the first people. I love the fact that I could listen to podcasts on my phone, get out, get on whatever computer I was and pick up right where I left off. I remember that was like magic back in the day. So they had all this cool stuff. And then they, at one point they were like, uh, James said they were like number one on Android. I think they were like close to number two on iOS. And then they sold it. And then in came the ads. And I'm, I remember they, the thing that when I tapped out, they went from, they would play an ad in between every episode. So you'd be listening to a playlist and one show would end in would come in an ad and then your show would start fine. And then an ad and then another show. But I remember once I was, and I remember this vaguely, I mean, not vaguely, um, clearly I was at Eastgate shopping mall and I pressed pause because I was going to go and do some shopping. And when I came out and pressed play again it wasn't a new episode i just pressed pause it played an ad and i was like wait a minute so then i hit pause and then i hit play and it played an ad and i was like wait a minute i'm gonna get an ad every time i stop this app and i went yeah i'm done see you later bye and then they just they kept i remember when they got bought by deezer the support as a podcaster, like if you had a problem with your feed on that was like, forget it. Cause that's a European company. And they were like, look, you're in a different time zone. <laughs> so we're just going to ignore you. And then it got sold. And then it got sold. Remind me a little bit of, uh, this is before many people's time, but mp3.com was a website that was just like, there were people making a living musicians on mp3.com. Uh, and then people forgot that uh, playing other people's music was illegal. And so that got sold and sued and sold and sued and sold and sued. And the problem was the people on mp3.com were just saying, oh, just go to mp3.com slash Dave Jackson. They didn't have their own website. So when mp3.com imploded, right. they lost their website. There was no like, well, I'll just, you know, 
They didn't have a newsletter. There was no way to contact any of your audience. So that's again, another reason why you need your own stuff. But, uh, um, if, if you want that feature of, I want an app that I can also listen to on a computer, there is overcast. Now overcast will be the first that's unfortunately only on iOS, but overcast will be the first to say, look, our web interface is ugly. In fact, he was going to turn it off and everybody was like, no. So it's there, but it, and it works. It's just not pretty. Um, podverse is a cool one. And what am I missing? Pocket cast. Pocket Cast is a pretty cool app. I've found, Jim, are, there, there are two types of apps. Which one are you? There is the, uh, what I will call a playlist. So that's Overcast, Castomatic, and that is, and I think Stitcher at the time. This is why when a new episode comes out, your app goes, oh, Dave has said when this, this particular podcast puts out an episode, put it in his money playlist, put it in his health playlist, put it in his podcast playlist. So it's a, if this happens, then do this. That's one style. And I've just come to the conclusion there are two types of apps. The other one is all your episodes come in and you'll have a big pile of them, probably in a folder or something. And then you could say, add this one to the queue, add this one to the queue, add that one to the queue. And the other ones eventually, I guess, just get deleted. So are you a playlist person or a queue person? Yeah, playlist. I do it yes. the playlist way. Yeah, that's that's yeah. me. And I... I get kind of bummed out when I find an app. Like I really liked Podverse uh, because they their web interface especially was really cool. Uh, Podverse, and I need—I swear I keep going back because I keep thinking, oh, that can't be the case. Their whole thing is cleanup. Like when I'm done listening to an episode, I want you to delete it off my phone and you know just get it out of my way. And I kept having to step over stuff I'd already listened to with Podverse. Uh, I, right now I'm using Castomatic and I've, I love Overcast, but Overcast, uh, Marco, the guy behind it has said, I'm never embracing this podcasting 2.0 stuff. Mm. He donates $500 a month to it, which is kind of odd. Cause I'm like, well, you are supporting it, but he's like, I'm not adding it to my app. So Castomatic, if you like Overcast, looks just like Overcast, except it's, um, you can send boosts and that whole nine yards. So, uh, uh, DR says I'm a pocket cast girl. It has folders so I can separate my cooking podcast. It does. The thing I think it doesn't do, because I know uh, Fountain, you can tag them. You can add a tag. And, and what's interesting, I talked to the guys about this. You can say, when this episode comes in, tag it with podcasting. And I can go in and look at just my podcasts that have been tagged. What it doesn't do is go to the next one when it's done. And I'm like, that doesn't work when I'm, on, I'm riding my bike in the middle of the forest and I got to stop to hit play. I'm like, I needed to go to uh, the next one. So uh, Dan Lefeb says, I'm a pocket cast person being able to upload a file on the web. Yes, that is also in Castomatic. So I have a couple of times now this month. I don't know what got in my brain. Uh, Jim, do you listen to your episode before you upload it? Uh, yes. Yes, you always should. And twice I did this month and twice I was like, oh, gee, ah, and one was... Uh, the future of podcasting. That's a show I do with Jan Daniel J. Lewis. And that was actually a, I didn't listen to it, but it just was weird that Hindenburg forgot where the file was. Mm -hmm. So I could, it looked fine. I exported it, but I didn't listen to it. So uh, one of the things you can do with pocket cast really easy is upload it to their website and then listen to it before, like it's a podcast. You can listen through your earbuds and all. Uh, but uh, you know, um, uh, Daniel is saying, I think Marco only said he'll never integrate value for value. Okay. So, yeah. So you're not going to be streaming any sats in, in overcast anytime. Um, and then fountain is if you go to new podcast apps.com, uh, ditch your, uh, your old style, your, uh, what's a fun word for old, your legacy, dump your legacy apps and get yourself one of them. there new fangled podcast apps at, at uh, new podcast apps.com. They're great. Cause Pepperidge farm remembers what I have no idea. Uh, you know, Jason says, uh, Marco still won't add the explicit tag and he's a complete jerk. Oh, well, there you go. I still pay for his product. Yeah. I still pay for his product. I don't use it. It's good, but he won't embrace even simple things like explicit tags which should be a standard. That's interesting. But yeah, Overcast also allows you to upload things via the web. So Overcast, Pocket Cast, and Castomatic. Uh, those are three I know of. There might be more. 
that allow you to upload a file, uh, which is great if you've um, ever accidentally, I don't know, found an audio book from something and you want to listen to it, you just upload it to the app. So can't imagine being a podcast player or creator and having to listen to the podcast community throw you thousands of can you make it just this way can oh. you make it just that way this is what i like you know you're getting some telemetry of how people are using it and um and, and of course everyone thinks their ideas are the right like i told you a year ago to do this and you still haven't done it and you're like i didn't say i was going to like right. you know type deal uh i just can't i i, I feel for for folks that's another thing I never, I would never do is create an app that, well, that if you it's just too many opinions. Too well, many. think about that. You've got everybody going, Hey, like I wanted to do this, but it's like, how come you guys don't make playlists? Right. That's usually me. And if you're lucky, you get $12 for the year. Like you're getting a buck a year of which Apple's taking 30%. You know, it, that's a rough yeah. gig. Any way you cut it, that's again, the whole value for value thing some of these apps now will take like a very small percentage, like 1% of every SAT that goes through, but at least you're getting an income the more people use the app. And I'm fine for that because a dealing with um, any kind of, whether it's Google or Apple, you know, iOS changes. Now I've got to update my app. So it still works. So it's not like you build it once and like, all right, app's done. Let's sit back and make our millions. No, you got to keep updating that thing. Cause the software that your app runs on constantly changes, kind of like WordPress. If you're doing a plugin, you got to keep updating that because now there's PHP eight or something, and it it just gets kind of mm -hmm. tricky and things like that. Yeah, there's for app developers, there is no rest for the weary. Like they, it's just and it, things are constantly changing, and standards are changing, and both iPhone and Android are always uh, move. They move very very quick in their development standards and. Then you've got an audience of people who think they know, like, you should do it this way. <laughs> and you're like, well, you know, should I, you know, type deal. And yeah. if, you would, well, if you would just do this, how, how you know. And, and, of course, individuals are always so kind about the way they, <laughs> the, the way they talk about this kind of feedback. Always, always general kindness. In Pardon it. me, so, sir. Yes. So you start getting a little edgy with people. I'm not saying I, that that's my <laughs> job and that's what I do. And I just, I'm in the middle of a 10 day vacation to get away from people like that. <laughs> but you know, you start like, you know, like it, it's, it's, it's just some work, you know, it's just some work. So be, yeah. be kind, be kind. Well, to the other thing is if you add like fountain, is is an uh, one of the newer apps that's getting a lot of play they have comments like you can actually leave comments so does uh, good pods is another one where i downloaded good pods and people haven't been commenting on my show and i was like ah crap and i know daniel is working on what's called cross app comments so that kind of like youtube you know like you can leave a comment on youtube and it's it's yeah. there but if you go on a different app and this and that so it's uh Cross app comments would be a centralized database in the cloud somewhere that you could go into Fountain and see the comments and then go into Podverse and see the same comment and then go into Castomatic. That's one of the things they're they're working on, but it's uh it's tricky. But if you if you keep adding features because somebody says, Well, can it do this? And you go, I don't and you're you're a programmer, so you're like, oh, I don't know, I've never tried that. Ooh, look, look at what I did. It it, you know. Well, now you've got the problem of it does so much, the learning curve just went through the roof. Yeah. So yeah. it's got to be easy to use. It's a it's a rough gig. I would not. Uh, Somebody yeah. Pod Pages handled this pretty well. Maybe we yeah. can use this as a transition into into the yeah. into that. But the, uh, what's his name over there? Um, uh, Brian, Brendan. Brian? Brendan. Brendan. Brendan at Pod Page. I was a little skeptical uh, with the amount of things he was adding to the website when it went live. I mean, he was literally like daily updates. And he he asked, uh, I I sent him an email one time. Hey, how do I do this? He's like, actually, you can't, but give me a day. <laughs> and then he sent me an email the next day. Okay, that's ready for you. And that kind of development sometimes is not sustainable, right? You can't, you, yeah. you you're bolting on so many pieces. Somehow. 
he has done a, just a really nice job over there at PodPage. And I'm not saying that because they're a sponsor and they do some things yeah. here and you have the shirt on and all those kinds of things. <laughs> um, genuinely, I mean, it's a really good, I mean, they've, they've built and developed a really good service over there. And, and he was very agile. Again, I'm contradicting myself, uh, like from just a few minutes ago, but he was very agile and added a lot of things on and listened to what people said. So he, th there it was, there it worked. Well, and the other thing he did is there does come a point and people started asking like, well, can I send email from pod page, especially around email lists? And he's like, nope, we're a podcast website. What you want is convert kit, mailer light, you know, MailChimp. We don't do that. Like, that's not our thing. We're not going to get into that thing. Plus he's a guy that worked in Google and he knows again, another email list is another thing that seems simple. But getting it delivered is a whole, that's a fun little bag of worms there that you got to pick from. But uh, yeah, and he's got some new things. He, I, I am on uh, Slack with him. Uh, and, uh, and, and for the record, my pod page shirt, homemade. I, oh. I'm such a big fan. I said, hey, can I get a copy of your logo? And uh, went to, I think, T Public. I think it's podcastingshirts.com. Um, is where I have a bunch of podcasting shirts where I, I think I make a whole, you know, 38 cents. So you but, made one and you ordered it yourself, but other people can buy that pod page. Yeah. How, do they have, do you have a link where they can go? I, I think easier? it's podcasting shirts. Here, let's do a invitation of the new media show. Um, <laughs> I think it's, uh, let me see. I don't have to, uh, I love the one where did you listen to the episode where Rob and Todd were and it's not podcasting shirts that's some sort of uh maybe podcastshirts.com cuz podcasting shirts is some sort of chinese thing. Oh yeah. Uh podcast Oh uh, well, this is fun audio. Um if you go to T Public and just search for pod page it'll probably show up. But uh anyway, but uh he is awesome and speaking of awesome uh, if you'd like to become an awesome supporter, it's super simple. You can be like our good friend Randy uh, over at, well, we'll talk about him in a second, but uh, you can be an awesome supporter at askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome. And uh, if you would like to start a podcast or if you already got a podcast and you want to grow it, uh, check out the schoolofpodcasting.com new sales page coming probably by the end of the weekend uh, where you can get courses and you can get coaching but it's interesting. I was building this video sales letter last night and I went into a folder called testimonials. I forgot how many testimonials I had. So the next time I'm having a bad day, I'm just going to go in and listen to people say really nice things about me. But one of the things that kept coming up was the community. The fact that we've got this really kick butt Facebook group that uh, people can go and uh, bounce ideas off of. So check it out. School of podcasting.com. Use the coupon code coach and uh, save on either a monthly or yearly subscription. And yes, Randy Black is the uh, the man of the hour today. And uh, we want to thank him so much for, you know, being the new sponsor. In fact, Whoa! Whoa! David Lee Roth is ecstatic that Randy Black from workfromtheweights.com is our featured uh, supporter of the week. Thank you so much for that, Randy. We really do appreciate it. And, uh, from uh, workfromtheweight.com, the description, if you're like, well, what's what's that about? Work from the Weight is a weight loss journey podcast following the ups and downs of its host, Randy Black, as he works to lose weight. The show features personal insights and what has and has not worked for Randy. And guests may join the show from time to time to share their ups and downs in losing weight or insights into ways to achieve goals in weight loss. Again, check it out, workfromtheweight.com. And uh, we were talking about pod page. Look, it matches my shirt. That's right. If you would like to see the awesome pod page logo, it's easy. Just go to this website, trypodpage.com, and you can actually make a website. I once helped uh, Zeta Christian, uh, and uh, I think we spent maybe eight minutes on her podcast before she's like, that's wonderful. So if you want to learn pod page, well, then go over to learnpodpage.com. That's a free course I have on pod page. And uh, while you're learning things, if you want to learn about home gadget geeks, well, then just go over to theaverageguy.tv and pick yourself up some more Jim Cullison because who doesn't want more of that? And Jim, if you ever get contacts, do you realize your brand is ruined? Yes. Because yeah, you're all about so, the But I never will. I would have gotten them by now. So 
and that's why I wear black glasses now because the the, the brand matches. <laughs> there you the go. Yeah, there you go. And uh, if you'd like to be an awesome supporter, we're on the journey to a hundred. This is the old slide. Uh, go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome, and you could be as cool as Randy, and we'll give you a big shout out. And uh, uh, you, know, in some He's cases, number we'll, what? He is, I believe, number thirty-six, if I remember. We right. should have like jerseys that we give. <laughs> Maybe you can make it on on the. T- the That's t- right. Uh, I t- found the link, by the way. I didn't find the shortened link, but I threw the link, the T Public link, to your oh, there store we go. in chat. You can- podcast clothes. I was saying shirts. I had podcast shirts. That's the one that's now this weird Chinese website because mm. uh, it, it's the old like, oh, I let the domain slide, and then it was instantly picked up and. Yeah, I don't know what that website is, but it it doesn't look. Yeah, I was like, hmm, maybe, maybe not. So, uh, if you have a question, you can jump on in. We got a little more time. Just go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash question. And of course, if you're here live, uh, we'll take your question here. Randy just had a fun comment. Uh, Randy Cantrell from uh, Leaning Towards Wisdom. This morning, an older gentleman asked me, What time is your podcast on? I think he walked away totally confused after I tried to explain how podcasting works. Yep. It's, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, DR said, I missed last week. Well, how dare you? Um, Did you talk about the new subcategories that Apple has implemented? One of them is entrepreneurship. I'm shocked that that one wasn't there before. It was there before. What they did is they went to subcategories and they went to them like it was a minor league baseball team. And they're like, hey, guys, we want to thank you for being subcategories. You're going to the big game. And they're like, we're going to the big game. And they're like, yep, you're going to have new and noteworthy sections. Uh, you're going to have whatever, whatever. So they took them and kind of made them like what legit or, or they get more stuff for people to obsess over. And I'm like, wait, can we have more stats and things to look at that have nothing to do to grow my audience? And, and the answer is yes. So that was my take on it. I was like, it's cool, but I was with you. I thought they added new ones. And then when I read up on it, I was like, oh, no, these have been here. They just added the ability to have new and noteworthy, which for the record is cured by apple there is no algorithm there is no you can't pay people in you know the far east to have eight million followers do we still have to say this we do have to still say this and um you know get you into new and noteworthy uh for only for eight weeks though that was the uh thing that always got me because you could go to new and noteworthy and see a show that had been around for years and i'm like so like do you not see that you have more than eight weeks to uh to do that so uh, and then we got a follow up on. I said, "How many books does a typical, you know, person sell?" Uh, Want to thank our writing fright went out. He said, "It's twelve. Wow, that's soul crushing." Uh, but it's but if it's marketed properly, it's probably closer to five hundred copies sold. So it's it's not a lot. What a book does for you is it makes you look legit. And uh, I have it because of my podcast story. That's fun. Speaking of looking legit, I put out an episode. I I don't know if this is what caused it, but I have a show and right now the domain doesn't work. And uh, Jim, I did the thing again where I unstarred something and now I can't get it off the screen. Do you have it still starred? Thank you. Um, Anyway, I put out an episode of Feeding My Faith and I got a phone call from a, an event and i'm not going to say the name until i get it things in writing but at this point i got a speaking gig um in new york city well not new york city but it's going to be cool i'm going on tour in september i will be in new york on september 8th and i'll be in new jersey at indie PodCon, uh joe pardo's event on the 9th but it was kind of cool they're like do you want to come speak we'll pay for your hotel and other things and i was like Ooh, a paid speaking gig. How cool is that? I haven't had one of those in a while. So that's a because of my podcast story. And that's kind of what a book does from what I've heard. Is it just, you know, like, well, I have a book. And it used to mean maybe a little more because so many people now are self-publishing. I know if I write another book, I will definitely self-publish. Uh, not that anything against Skyhorse Publishing. The fun part about Skyhorse is after I my book went out, I went to their website and like every disgraced Republican has a book out on 
Sky Horse Publishing. It's like, oh, I, I mean, great, uh, great company over there. So um, we haven't done the super fun question. You know, the old, it's, uh, it's an oldie but a goodie. And that is, of course, uh, and Jim, I'll let you take the answer here because it's, it's, mm. you know. It's, oh, it's going to leave the hard ones for me. It, huh? It's fun to do the classics. Uh, I'm thinking of changing the name of my podcast to get a, get a little more traction and make the subject more obvious to listeners. So my question is, can I rename it on my hosting platform and would it automatically change on the apps with the current episodes out? I only have 12 episodes released. And the answer is... Can you change it? What's the what's the real question in this? The real question is I want to rename my show. Yeah, heck yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's why I said this is like an oldie but a goodie. Yeah. And the answer is he, he kind of almost answered his own or she, I'm not sure who it was, answered their own question. And that is like this is called Ask the Podcast Coach. So if we wanted to rename it to Free Podcast Consulting, uh, in this case, this is hosted on Libsyn. Use the coupon code SOP free to get a free month. By the way, tomorrow. If you want to sign up at Libsyn, tomorrow would be the day to sign up, assuming you have media that needs hosting. Don't buy a media host if you don't have any media to host. But Because tomorrow is the second of the month, and when you use the coupon code SOP free, you get the rest of the current month, which would be July, and then you get the whole next full month, which would be August. So you would actually sign up on the second and not pay till September. Well, that was a long tangent. Lips Meanwhile, that's a lips and hack, right? There. It is a lips and hack. Yeah. Like it. So uh, whatever your media host is. So in this case, it's Libsyn. I could go into Libsyn, go to settings podcast and change, ask the podcast coach to free podcast consulting, change the description to be like Dave and Jim do stuff and answer questions and blah, 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 whatever. Upload some new artwork. And of course, Jim, where am I going to go to get the artwork? Yeah, you're going to go to more, our friend, our good friend, Mark. That's right. Podcast branding.co. Podcast branding. Yeah. and uh and say hey like we need this to now say free podcast consulting and probably within 24 hours uh it would update across the app so i always tell people your your podcast is a recipe not a statue the only time that gets weird is we have the website ask the podcast coach so let's say i was using wordpress instead of pod page why you would do that, I have no idea. But anyway, I'm I'm using WordPress and I'm using PowerPress. Now, this is not this is not any shade on Blueberry. PowerPress is a great plugin, but my my feed would now be based on a domain name. And you have to be very careful because if I moved to freepodcastconsulting.com, you want to make sure that's up and running so you can redirect your old feed to your your new feed. So that's uh that's the tricky part. But that was a uh a fun one. It's uh, going to take a little work. Like if yeah. you're going to change the name, it's not, this is in a couple hours. This is a weekend of work. Well, depending yeah. on how, how yeah. Because if, if you're, you're not changing not, the website, you're just changing the name. Right. Then. So if it's like, you know, if I had things on davidjackson.org and that was still the home of everything, I don't have to change the website. I'm just rebranding it. Right. Then it's a piece of cake. But yeah, like you said, if you're doing website stuff and, artwork and you know the here's the uh total total uh a fun tangent of this of changing things i switched and and acuity scheduling now owned by squarespace i have no reason to ever leave this company except i bought tidy cow and i know uh coach dave says he was having problems with it working with outlook but it just dawned on me that i'm paying for you know acuity scheduling and I so wish that I have a link at the School of Podcasting. If you go to schoolofpodcasting.com slash schedule, that will redirect, redirect to now Tidy Cow because I made this cool, easy to remember link. I am finding on my website, in some cases, especially in the early days where I put a direct link to Acuity Scheduling, so I now have to, uh, I, there's a plugin. You have to be very careful with it because you can really hork your website. But I'm looking for that specific scheduling link and replacing it with schoolofpodcasting.com slash schedule. And it will actually search through your, your WordPress and find that link and replace it. But you have to be very careful because especially with find and replace, you could you could replace it with the wrong code and break things. But I say that, 
to say uh, I'm a big fan of, of Switchy, which is a link tracker that uh, if you're going to be using a link and you're going to be mentioning it a lot, you, you want to use something, whether it's Bitly or something. I like Switchy because you can add a domain to it. Uh, because now going back to find these random links that I put in, you know, back in 2008, I was like, oh, what a hassle to uh, to clean this up. So that's always fun. But um, I do have, this is uh, one we've kind of talked about in the past, like what kind of computer do you need? And this person, and I found this out last night, I spent four and a half hours making a six minute video. That was fun. Uh, but this guy says, I need help with bare bones video editor. We're trying to release our first video episode for patrons and I'm running into what appears to be a computing power problem. Uh, the background is I'm not new to editing, but it's been several years since I've edited video. My main computer died in a recent power outage. So I'm working on my laptop, a Lenovo that was pretty dope. His word, not mine. I'm not an old white guy trying to sound cool. Uh, so I'm working on my laptop, a Lenovo that was pretty dope in 2019. Yo, but, yo, bro. <laughs> but that was never a gaming laptop or anything crazy. So what I've tried to do, but it failed, is DaVinci Resolve, which is a really cool program. Uh, but apparently just straight up, it don't run at all. It loads, and then I get a bunch of pop-up warnings about my hardware on my computer that it isn't up to the task. I can't even preview a clip because quick rendering in the preview window is too taxing. So apparently this Lenovo from 2019 may not have been the fastest thing when he bought it. He said, I've also tried, and I've never heard of this, Microsoft Clip Master. I am the Clip Master. Uh, it's free and pretty basic. I was able to chop up our 90-minute, so it's a 90-minute video, and I went, there could be part of the problem. Uh, I could uh, chop up our 90-minute recording add intro and outro music, add our logo as the overlay with an added trail report, throw in a promo for a sister show and got the whole thing together and ready to release. Um, I hit export and after it was 99% processed, you guessed it, he got an error saying the export failed. It is free, so stop not paying them. Um, I tried 1080, I tried 720 and then 480 and they all failed. I read uh, Clipmaster is the best for 10 minute or under clips. Well, you're putting a 90 minute clip. There we go. Uh, but didn't know that until after I finished arranging. Well, okay, you're forgiven. I'm confident I can get this edited fast if I can find an editor that isn't too demanding. Does anyone have a recommendation? My wife's MacBook is from 10 years ago, so I can try. So I can try editing there, but not sure that will be any better. Uh, Oh, Jim has one. Ooh, I have an answer. Do you want an answer? Uh, yeah, that's uh, you're, okay. you're, you're, you you're, looked at me funny. <laughs> well, because you, I, I thought you were doing a Horshack imitation. Oh no, no. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Mister uh, Kata. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Da Vinci, this is just right off Google. Um, it, asking that question, uh, Da Vinci Resolve is it good on a low end computer? They do have a feature called optimized media. That improves your media files for fast rendering. This can be a great solution to render on a low-end device. There's so there's that option. There's two things really for a laptop that are going to govern whether this is going to work or not. Chances are is an SSD drive, so that's going to be fine. But it's probably it probably has four or eight gig of RAM, and that is not enough. Right. So chances are that Lenovo can probably be upgraded to sixteen. It probably came with four, depending on when they bought it. Yeah. That was a real popular, like 2019, 2018, four gig of RAM. Now I'm requ I'm I'm requiring, I'm asking uh, for most Windows users, you need 16 gig of RAM. If you're going to run anything modern, it's just the way it goes. The laptop processor is probably just fine. It has integrated graphics, so you're, that that is going to probably handle it. You can probably need to look into an upgrade. You know, you're talking maybe under 100 bucks to get 16 gig of RAM in there. A little bit of work to get it done, but it's doable. If you're a current podcaster and you look at your Windows PC and it has 8 gig of RAM, you should be looking at how do I extend the life of this? Depending on the processor, if it's a modern one in the last couple of years, you're fine. It's just a simple, pretty simple RAM upgrade to, to get there. 
you can do that yourself. That's like Legos. It literally plugs in like Legos. <laughs> snap two things, pull yeah. out the old one, put the new one in, snap it in again. Uh, memory is one of the easiest things you can do. Your manufacturer will tell you how much that board supports by model number. And then you can say, okay, what kind of RAM do I need? You can go on Amazon and buy that. They'll ship it to you. I just, I have a Lenovo um, desktop mini that my wife uses. It had eight gig. I ended up buying two, two more eight gig sticks and uh, input. They were $12. It's super cheap. Well, for this, for whatever, it's cheap for these right now. Yeah. I spent 25 bucks and gave her 16 gig of RAM. That will absolutely make your experience better as a podcaster. So just make sure you're not cheating right now that you're not cheating on RAM because Windows is, especially Windows 11, is just a, a hog. Yeah. Open up Chrome, Edge, or Brave, any of the three, and even, even Firefox, they're, they're going to take, in some cases, 8 to 12 gig of RAM by themselves. They're so... Browsers are so heavy right now. So yeah, there you go. There's your, if you're going to spend any money on upgrading, RAM would be the way to go right now. Yeah. And then uh, Todd the Gator said, I use DaVinci Resolve and it's very taxing on your GPU. It is a really powerful program. In fact, from what I've heard, it's free and it does things that paid programs don't do. So it's, mm -hmm. it's like professional grade. Um, he has an RTX 3080 and it uses 100% of it. Video editing is a power hog. Yeah, this is where when people go, wait, you can do a podcast without video? I go, yes, yes, you can. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. I was using Camtasia on my MacBook, or my MacBook, my Mac Mini last night. And uh, I woke up this morning. It's really weird. And I went to hit play. And I guess because it's been sitting there overnight, like I, I had to close Camtasia. And I'm hoping when I open it back up, because I got to edit this video some more. Uh, and it was only six minutes, but there were lots of, I, I was doing B roll, all sorts of fun stuff. And, um, yeah, videos, you know, if you got the machine for it, it's a lot of fun, but, uh, it can really, you know, it, you need a machine for that. Yeah. Um, well, and it will like, this is one of those areas where on the laptop, you're going to have an integrated GPU on there. Yeah. And if that's a lower end chip, I mean, they recommend from the website, they recommend a core I seven or a Ryzen seven either one of those would do it if that's a cheaper end laptop and maybe it was a core i3 yeah even adding ram isn't going to fix that you're going to need a fairly robust processor in that in in a minimum of a core i7 it sounds like from their website with fairly decent integrated graphics oftentimes the integrated graphics are working off the ram so the two work together but um it's you're going to need to have some horsepower to run this thing and a 3080 is a pretty, pretty good GPU. So, you know, and it's going to, it's going to take advantage of all of that. Yeah. Uh, Coach Dave says I'm running 96 gigabytes on a 2933 megahertz DDR4. Let's get our geek on, on my uh, Mac cheese grater. Yeah. Uh, the system still can't keep up with me when I'm video editing. Yeah. It's, it's o tricky. Older processor, I think with, I think that's still Intel, but the M1s and the M2s on the yeah. Mac side don't even blink. Yeah. They're just like, hey, what? they're designed for this. Like, this is one of those things right now. If you have an older Mac or even an older PC and you're doing a lot of video, just get a Mac M1 or get M1 Mini. They're like a thousand bucks. They're not, they're not terrible anymore. And uh, they, they just handle it. So I, I render that video, Dave, and it, I just, I just let it go, do some other things, come back, That's it's it. done. Yeah. That's what I did last night. I was like, render, and then I think I went and checked the doors. I was getting ready to go to bed, and it, it was done in like maybe five minutes. I was really yeah. surprised. I walked by, I'm like, it's done already? Yeah. So that was kind of cool. A 1080, and, and for, <laughs> pretty soon people are going to be wanting to do this in 4K. Yeah. You know, no, and you're like, you. oh, yeah, you better have some, you, you know, you better have a direct line to the power company at that point, you know. You're well, that and some juice. and some makeup and some yeah. some nice uh, filters for from the AI takes care of all that now. So it, it just makes you look like I, for me, I put on the Brad Pitt filter mm. and it just just kind of makes me look like Brad Pitt. I kind of look like go. him now, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. OK, I, I was really surprised <laughs> when we started. I was like from the average guy dot TV, Brad Pitt. Uh, Brad wait. Pitt? Yeah. 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 Um. Hey, let's do math live. This is always fun. Uh, DR says, uh, where can I find the current average episode download? I always tell people 
I think the average is around 1,200 if you listen to Lipson. The median is around 130-ish, meaning 50% get less, 50% get more. If you go to... Can I share my own screen? I think we're going to go Kaleidoscope here. Um, here, if you go to Buzzsprout ads, or Buzzsprout, they have platform stats. So here, the question is, what is an active podcast? So they're saying there is 139 million, 139, 972,000 uh, and 36 downloads in uh, May, in this case. If I divide that by 127,613 active podcasts, I don't know if they have that definition, um, that is 1,096 in terms of the average. If we stop the screen and I want to share it again, another fun thing you can go to is uh, Daniel has a site called Podcast Industry Insights. And if we go to that, you'll see there are 4 million. I don't know that this has download numbers when I think about it. Um, wait a minute. The stats are up here. Um, but, but, oh, so this is just about Apple Podcasts. So there are, yeah, this is just a number of podcasts. It's not download numbers. Um, now you can, uh, at podcastindustryinsights.com, you can pay to get access to you know, more deeper cues and such, but I don't, I think this is just active shows and things of that nature, but it's usually, you know, depending on, uh, I know uh, with Buzzsprout, like I said, theirs is about a thousand when I did the math here, uh, but Libsyn shares that on their show once a month and it's usually around 1200. I, I usually, it's like 125 is the median, meaning 50% get more and 50% get less. And then the average is usually somewhere I usually just tack on a zero uh, and go that route. But uh, it's, it's, you know, to me, it's hard to say, like, I see that all the time. Hey, I got X amount of downloads. Is that good? And you're like, well, what's your show about? Oh, pygmy ponies. Well, mm, you're not going to get as many downloads as the, Hey, we're all fat show because that has a bigger audience to it. So it's always uh, kind of fun. I did one thing we were talking about video. And I will say I totally get people releasing their first episode mm. because I worked so hard on that thing last night. I woke up today and I was like, I cannot, I cannot publish this at least for 48 hours because I need a fresh set of eyes. And just this morning I saw where in one case um, I have a testimonial from David Hooper and I put author of the book uh, 100 podcasting templates and I had the left left quotation mark, but I left off the right one. And I was like, Oh, there's, there's that. And there was a couple other things I wanted to, uh, to change, but I was, was so giddy that it was just done. And, and for the record, it's interesting for me, if I'm nervous about something, cause I'm like this video sales letter could, you know, this is something I've never done. I'm out of my comfort zone. I'm not really a video person. So a, what do I do? I eat cause I'm nervous. And I'm bored and I'm trying to do anything but go in and actually start the video. Once you started it, it was like, then I couldn't stop. Hence why I was up till about three in the morning. Cause I'm like, wait, I can get like in Canva, you can download videos. So I had some fun little B roll going on and things like that. But it's when I got done, I was like, oh, I so just want to throw this on the website and get it over with. And I was like, hold on, we, we need a fresh set of eyes on this. And uh, so I totally get why people will put out an episode, even if you go, you, you do know you can't hear yourself over the music. The music's too loud. They're like, I don't care. <laughs> I just want, <laughs> just want it out there. So Jim, have you ever found yourself in that predicament where you're oh, just working on anything? Like, I don't yeah. care. Just put it out there. You just got to get it done. And when you say that to yourself, that means go to bed and pick yeah. it up the next day. I, I can't think unless you have a customer deliverable or a deadline or right. I think in most cases you don't some you do. So if you have a deadline, well, you gotta yeah. get out there, but if you don't have a deadline and you're, you're, you're tired, just wait till the next day. I mean, even if, I would say, Dave, I think you produce school of podcasting every Monday morning, 6am or something like that. Right. It technically goes out 12 Oh five. Okay. So, but, yeah, every Monday. Every Monday. Yeah. 
and if I had an episode of yours and it was me, I was making it and I was, it was, I was tired and it was late. My advice would be just release it a little late. It, it's better late. It's better, better yeah. than better than early and wrong. I think. Yeah. I and always so, say I would rather get a, I would rather get a great episode that was late than an on time episode that was yeah. Yeah, all right. You Listen, if, if you're a, if you're a person who struggles with quality and, and like some of us are good at it, others aren't, I'm not very good at it. Details aren't, I, I'm, I'm into activity, not details. I can get a lot of things done. It may not be the best quality. Okay. Knowing that about myself, I'd have to do two things. One, move my deadlines up. So I built in time for QA, right? Yeah. So like, Hey, I'm going to trick myself into thinking this thing needs to be done on Saturday so that I have Sunday evening to review it. So your deadline really isn't Sunday evening. It's really Saturday evening. So you have Sunday to look at it, do it that way, or never promise you're going to get it out at any given time. <laughs> like home gadget geeks. I, I don't, I sometimes, most times it's Saturday, sometimes after this show, then sometimes it's before this show. And I've gotten them. It's done as early as Friday, uh, Friday evening it's last week. I put it out on Monday, <laughs> mostly cause I was on vacation, but it, you know, so I think those are the one or two options. You got to move up your timelines to build in some time for QA, or you need to just not promise your audience it's going to show up at the same time. I've actually never had anybody on Home Gadget Geeks say, "I'm, I'm, where's your show? I'm missing it." Usually, there are a few episodes behind, anyways, so they're just grateful to be have the time to catch up. In some cases, so Dave, I think those are two two strategies you can use if you're if you're you and me who like we're, we're more getting things done and not always checking the quality on it and uh, so we got to trick ourselves into that that's it craig has a, a question here about uh oops uh buzzsprout uh i see the buzzsprout has a service called cohost.ai and what this is it's kind of interesting instead of using something like cast magic or whatever, you know, Cap Show. There are a bunch of those AI tools that will do show notes for you and such. What they've done is they basically built this into um, Buzzsprout. And so it's an additional thing. And this is kind of interesting. I'm, I'm seeing um, different people, uh, different companies here. I'm trying, I logged into, let me share my screen here real quick. Um, and so I'm going to log into Buzzsprout and you'll see where, what it is, it's a, an additional service that you can add. And so it's kind of like they have magic mastering. And so this is basically, and they've admitted this is alphonic. So if you want to give them another $6 a month, the thing I've never understood is because Buzzsprout will take your show and they publish it mono. If, if you just upload it, that's been one of my, like, I like buzz. They have a really great feature set. But if you want stereo, you have to turn on Magic Mastering, which is an extra six bucks a month, and then it's one ninety two. And I'm like, why not one twenty eight? But um, so they, but it's it's an add on. So they have their basic service at twelve bucks. You can add uh, six bucks for Magic Mastering, and then Cohost AI, it suggests episode titles, show notes, chapter markers, and a transcript. So now this is an additional ten dollars a month because you got transcripts in there and things like that. Uh, but it basically will suggest episode titles for you. It uh, They already do chapter markers, but now it's going to suggest them. So it's looking at the transcript and saying, hey, this would be a good place to add a chapter. Uh, this show that you're listening to right now has chapters. So depending on what app you're using, there might be a chapters tab. There might be a little arrow to go to the next one. But uh, it's basically, it's one of those things, because some people are like, wait, I'm, I'm paying 12 bucks for Buzzsprout. The co-host thing is another 10 bucks a month. And I get that, but it really depends on how much time is that going to save for you. And for some people, if you are not a marketer, you have a hard time coming up with titles, et cetera, et cetera, then that 10 bucks may be a godsend in show notes and things like that. So I just think it's interesting uh, that they kind of have their core system. And then if you want, it's kind of a la carte. Oh, do you want magic mastering here? It's six bucks more. If you want uh, to use this um, co-host AI, it's it's this. I haven't turned it on yet. I need to because 
I have a I have a course. If you go to uh, schoolofpodcasting.com slash free classes, there is a class on how to choose a media host. And everybody goes, oh, I bet that one points at lips. And it's I, I went very factual. I'm like, here's what this one does. And now I need to update that to show their magic mastering. So I need to turn it on on my Buzzsprout thing. Same thing with Captivate. Captivate just came out with uh, the ability to have your own Patreon built into Captivate. And I'm like, oh, I need to make more videos now because they keep rolling out new features. But uh, um, have you, so. Dave, have you tried this show through like Swell or AI, any of those services that takes the whole thing and tries to give you some titling for it? And, and yeah. I, I run it through impression because I, I do this on home gadget geeks and the subject changes pretty frequently. Yeah. And AI is still struggling with that. Like it, 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 it kind of, it's, it does well if it's a single subject, but when, when, you know, you and I do four or five, maybe 10 different subjects throughout it, that the AI engine just still really struggles to like really understand how many it will, it, it wants to pick one thing. Yeah. Like oftentimes. Right. Are you, you experiencing the same thing? Absolutely. Yeah. The uh, it does an OK job. I use uh, I think I usually use cast a mag or cast magic because uh, that was an AppSumo deal. And so it's not an ongoing thing. And it does a pretty good job of saying here are the topics that were covered. Like it'll pick up that we've changed topics. But when it goes to write a summary is usually where it's like. You know, the other thing I wish we could do is tell these things to write in first person because it seems weird when it's like in this episode, Dave Jackson, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And the and the host talks about such and such. And I'm like, well, I, I am the host. I'm like, I'm I would like it to write it like I wrote it, you know. And so um, it's uh, it's interesting. So, yeah, DR says cast magic is pretty good. Yeah, it's uh, it's not bad. They're all they all get you about 80 to 90 percent there. What I did with my sales letter was interesting because I know a sales letter it's here's your problem. Do you swallow saliva in small amounts uh, over long periods of time? Well then, you know, and then you, you exaggerate that. Do you realize that could lead to blah, 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 cancer and death. I've got the solution for you, right? So that's every sham wow commercial. Here's the problem agitated. If you don't do this, your children will die. And then you go, but now there's this, you know, and then you always have a bonus and things like that. But I went to chat GPT and I go, what are the main components of a, sa a video sales letter? And it was like, here's nine. And I was like, got it, got it, got it. Ooh, totally forgot about that. Da, 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 da. And then I said, here are basically the five features of the school of podcasting. You know, there's coaching, there's uh, this, there's the community, blah, blah, blah. And I said, and so using these features, write a video sales letter using the components you just gave me and it did and what's interesting about it is i used maybe 10 percent of that mm. in the end because it was like now not that it was bad but a i i am horrible at scripts so i didn't want to have to try to read a script because i i almost busted out i have a teleprompter that i've never used and i was like you know what i'm just going to do this in chunks and then just splice the video together where I messed it up. But it's one of those things where it it took me about 20 minutes to write the video sales letter. And and again, then I just looked at it and was like, okay, that paragraph, I'm going to pull that bullet point out. But it still saved me time. I just thought it was interesting that in the end, in terms of word for word, I, I didn't use hardly any of it. But it was great inspiration because I'm like, oh, this is what I need to end up with. Now, how does that apply to the school of podcasting? So it was, uh, I, I, I like chat GPT when I'm working on something I'm writing, but most of the time I don't need any help with it. I just happen to be a, Hey, let's see what chat GPT says kind of mood, but it was, uh, it was time saving. And the biggest thing I'm always worried about is like, this is going to end up not sounding like me. And it did because I just went in and was like, cause it kept talking about, uh, our team of, of instructors. And I'm like, Nope, that would be Dave Jackson. Uh, and this <laughs> yeah. and that. So yeah. it was it makes uh, some assumptions that aren't necessarily true. Yeah. And I think it's trying to write in a certain style. Like, like you said, it's trying to 
you know, you can go in and say, write this in the, in the voice of, in it, it, it will make, it'll adapt. I think you, you've got, you're going to need to, or it needs the ability to say, does this need to be in the first person and make it sound like mm. I'm writing it? Or is yeah. this, do you want third person writing on it? So there, that switch still needs to go. I was in swell. I was just in swell.ai mm-hmm. and like their copy and replace is kind of interesting. Cause you can go into the transcript. Like it always gets my last name wrong. In this right. case, it, it, it spelled it with a K. Okay. So I can, I can uh, highlight it, go replace. And then there's a box that says replace this in everything. And so it oh. fixed that spelling in all, all the pieces, transcripts, all of them, not just the transcript, but not just that transcript, but all it, within the block, right? Within the, uh, within the episode. So anytime it refer, it referred to me with the wrong name throughout all the stuff it makes, you know, cause it makes summary articles, it makes titles, it makes all these things. It'll replace it there. One of the interesting things about that, though, is all these keyword generators, and it is just word vomit. Like it is yes. not. It is not. Yes, I said all those words. I'm not sure all of them are key. So I think that's another area that you know it basically, you know, the code is like where it said two or more times, bring this in as a keyword, <laughs> and then eliminate the and. You know, yes, you're like. That's not AI, friends. Like that, no. that that's not AI. Sorry. No, that's it. Very much a, a word vomit. Uh yeah. Absolutely. Like one of the keywords is six or six. Like, how is that a key word? What, what is that even? Because no. I said I was talking about Wi-Fi routers, and I said, mm. is that a six or a six E? Right? That, that okay, right. in the context of that. It needed to be six, you know, Wi-Fi six, Wi-Fi six E. Those would be the correct key keywords for that. So we listen. I I know everybody thinks this this AI is going to take over the world. No. It is as dumb as a doornail. Like it is just. <laughs> so let's. Uh, it's doing some cool things, but let's just be realistic on, you know, for the future what it can do. Yeah, it's uh the thing I liked about Swell AI. And I think they still do this. I think you can buy a one-off. Like I know if you had a subscription and there was like an extra Monday in the month, yeah, you could yeah. just say, Hey, I need one more episode this month. Yeah, minutes. That I was, think you buy minutes for Yeah. It. Yeah. So, so it's uh that was a pretty cool one. That one, was one uh, free a month, I think, is what their plan their free plan is. I think you get because every month it resets and it's like, yeah. hey, you get one for free. So uh. I save it. Um Mostly because I want to see they're constantly updating it. So one one podcast a month, I think, okay, I'm going to take what I think is the best one this month, throw it into Swell, have it do its things. Um, sometimes it's better than others. It, I, I'm yeah. learning that if it's a single episode, if it's a single subject yeah. episode, better than multiple things going on. Yeah. The the thing I liked for, for this program was Otter. Otter AI, because yeah. yeah. it would say yeah. here are it was pretty good at picking out what the yes. main topics were yes. than uh, some of and the other keywords are more selective. They're not any better, but right. they don't give you 8000 of them. Like, <laughs> you know, you're like, now you can't put all those keywords in. I'm not sure that's going to make any sense. Yeah. So, well, holy cow, that went quick. Uh, Jim, what's what's coming up uh, on the average guy TV? Yeah, I think June was the month of vacation for me. I produced one podcast in the month and I'm still here. I took some. There time you go. Right? I'm still here. So. You'd have people knocking at your door. Like, excuse me, came Mr. <laughs> podcast police. <laughs> Where's your podcast? And I let the audience know it was good to take some time off, but we'll be ready to get back out. I've been scheduling stuff for July, so. That stuff will be coming up. What about you, Dave? On the School of Podcasting, I interviewed uh, mm-hmm. his first name is John. He's from Data Driven Marketing.co, if I remember right. We're going to be talking about uh, online courses and how to sell them, which I realize not everybody has an online course, but I'm going to kind of do my Dave Jackson thing and kind of interrupt things and go, this would apply to just your podcast. Uh, the one thing I thought was interesting is. In many cases, the reason things don't work is uh, the things you need to do to make them work. Uh, you're not doing them. It turns out that's and I was like, oh yeah, that would probably you know, if you need the car to work, you need to put gas in it, and you're like, oh yeah, we don't do that. 
well, that's that's why your car isn't running. So uh, really interesting guy. And uh, they did a great job. Just I was amazed at uh, they did a review of my sales page. And I was like, yep, that's why I always say get somebody not named mom to look at your stuff because I was thinking it was OK. The, the one button you clicked on it and it didn't go to nothing. But it was just like, why do you have that button there? And I was like, uh, I think the system made it. Like, I don't know. So, but we're here every Saturday, 1030 to noon. Ask the podcast coach.com slash live. Of course, you can be an awesome supporter at ask the podcast coach.com slash awesome. We will see you all next week.